Okay, now question number 3B from June 2016, IAL. Unfortunately, I did this question and I lost it. I labeled it something incorrectly and I lost the actual video of this. And thank you for Mr. I think it's Hamid or Hamid who pointed this out to me on the uh, YouTube channel on his comments. I actually saved this video um, as 3A and um, Three, I don't know what happened, but I lost it basically, so I'm going to do it all over again. Okay, so now, immediately after the impact, the blocks moved downwards together with the same speed. So basically, in 3A, what we did was, we had um, two blocks, we had a block A and B. Uh, the block A fell down onto block B, and the soft ground, here's the soft ground, so block A fell down onto block B. Okay, and um, immediately before the impact, before um, it, it hit B, Okay, its speed was seven meters per second. Okay, so let's think. Let's let's take this as just before the impact, and take this as just after the impact. Okay, after the impact, they're moving as one block. Okay, so before the impact, you've got block A and block B. You've got the the initial speed of A was seven meters per second, and the initial speed of B was zero, and the mass of A. Um, as I told us in the first question, block of mass 9 kilograms and um, A is 9 kilograms and B is 1.5. So this is 9 kg and this block B is 1.5 kg. So before the impact, this is the situation. Now after the impact, we can consider it as one block together of 10.5 kilograms because they're moving together after the impact in the same direction together and we want to find the speed after the impact, the, the common speed of the two. So we can use the, the law of conservation of momentum. The momentum before and after must be s the same. So the total momentum before the collision is going to be 9 times 7 plus 1.5 times 0. And that's equal to the total momentum, momentum after the collision which is 10.5 times V. So basically you end up with, um, that's 0, that's 63, 63 divided by 10.5 will give you the speed after the collision which is going to be let's have a look 63 divided by 10.5 63 divided by 10.5 gives you 6 so 6 meters per second is the speed at which these blocks start going into the ground alright so the situation now is you've got this one big block which is A and B uh, like joined together it's going into the ground it goes a certain distance into the ground until it comes to stop, to, comes to rest. So it starts off with an initial speed of 6. That's the speed of the common block after the collision. Of course, the final speed is 0. Now, what forces are acting on the block? Well, you've got the weight, which is 10.5 G. And you've got the resistance that the ground is giving. As it says here in the question, it says... Okay, um, they both, the, the blocks move downwards together with the same speed and both come to rest after sinking a vertical distance of 12 centimeters in the, into the ground. Assuming that the resistance offered by the ground has a constant magnitude R newtons, find the value of that resistance R. Okay, so that's what we need, we know. So if we look at this diagram, it's moving down. Okay, so um, the initial speed here as it's moving down is 6. So let's look at what we've got. We've got SUVA. Alright, so we don't know the distance, we know the initial speed is 6, we know the final speed is, is 0, uh, and we need to find the acceleration. Let's see, does it say how far it goes into the ground? Yes, it goes 12 centimeters into the ground. Okay, so we know S is 12 centimeters, we want it in terms of meters, so it's 0 0.12 meters. So we have what we need to find A. We can find the acceleration. Once we find the acceleration, we can therefore find the, the force R. Okay, because we can use um, resultant force. Because we, we, we now, let's have a look at what the acceleration is going to be. Now, I'm taking down as positive as it's moving down. So, what we can say is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So, V is 0. U is 6 going down. Plus 2 times... A, which I have to find, times S, which is 0 0.12, it's going down, right? So U squared is 36, sorry, 6 squared, 36. Okay, so we're going to have, um, basically what we'll have is minus 36 is equal to 0 0.24 times A. 
So A is going to be minus 36 divided by 0 0.24. So you're going to have minus 36, oops, negative 36 divided by 0 0.24. That gives you negative 150. Negative 150 meters per second squared. Okay, now that's a big acceleration and it's negative. Why? Because it's a deceleration. It's, it's slowing it down to zero, right? Okay, so negative, 0 point, negative 150 meters per second is acceleration. Now, we can use that now to find R because if we look at the forces acting upon the particle, it's going down. So you've got 10.5 G, that's acting down, acting up in the opposite direction is R. And that's equal to MA. Okay, and M is 10.5. And A is minus 150. So you have 10.5 times 9.8 minus r equals 10.5 times the acceleration which is minus 50 okay so we can find what r is r is going to be basically 10.5 times 9.8 r is going to be 10.5 10.5 um, multiplied by 9.8 okay and you're going to have to um, you're going to have to add this you're going to basically have this you're going to have r equals if i do it this way just to show you you have 10.5 times 9.8 and that's going to become positive on this side isn't it because you have to add it it's a negative so you're going to have times 10 plus 10.5 times 150 that become positive on this side so r is going to be the sum of okay this which is 102.9 plus 10.5 times 150. That's positive now because you move it to the side. So you end up with 1,677.9. So R is R is 1,600. Where is it? 1,677.9. Which we can round to 3SF as 1,680 newtons. Okay. So there we have the answer to this question. Okay, thank you for watching.